In the previous uh, video on taking derivatives of noisy data, we saw that uh, if we had some data with a noisy time base, we actually wound up with uh, uh, bad values for our derivatives, noisy values for our derivatives, even, uh, even if our uh, actual measured values had no errors in them. So, for example, we got this noise when we were just looking at the time base, uh, having some variability in it. We saw that we had variability in the actual values of our uh, milliseconds or microsecond measured time base. And down here we saw that when we used actual microsecond timing, even with our values being perfect, we got some noise in the second derivative. And particularly, even if we took many time steps to average over, we were still getting lots of noise. So let's see what would have happened if instead of taking five steps to average over here, we'd only taken one step to average over. What do we get? We get a real mess here. So we could probably improve on that somewhat by smoothing our data. We've previously looked at this exponential smoothing approach, which allows us to use this function, which you've seen in previous videos, to just smooth off the edges of the data. And we can use a time constant to uh, characterize that smoothing to, uh, to get some of the noise out of the data. So let's start by exponentially smoothing that data. We'll take our microsecond base time base, our V values that we started with, and we'll make them smoother with a, uh, a, a time constant of four milliseconds. So whatever is happening here, it's happening a lot more slowly than four milliseconds. And then we'll take the derivative of the smooth data. Once we've got the derivative, the V prime of that smooth data, we'll smooth the V prime data and then take the second derivative of that smooth V prime data. And let's see what comes out there. And again, we're just doing one time step for each of those uh, differentiations. Sure enough, if we do that calculation, we've got relatively low noise, or at least relatively low noise compared to this. So when we went back to the, uh, to the one-step calculations, we're doing much better if we smooth the data along the way. Now there's some interesting stuff going on here. The smooth value of the velocity is not quite correct early on, and as a result the smooth value of the acceleration is not quite correct early on. So we need to be a little suspicious of these values when we're just initializing our, our calculation. But later on it's working pretty well. So let's try smoothing over a longer time. Let's go up to uh, 10 milliseconds for our smoothing time. That got rid of a whole lot of noise, but it's added some lag here. So let's go back down to, let's, let's say, uh, 5 milliseconds. See if that's a reasonable compromise. That's still got a fair bit of noise in it. Maybe we want, might want to average over some more time steps. If we average over two time steps, that should reduce the noise somewhat. And it is taking down the noise quite a bit. Let's try three time steps. So we've got different effects from different solutions here. We're changing the, uh, the approach that we're using to do our calculations, and we're getting better and better. We're zooming in on something that looks like it's going to do a pretty good job of calculating this acceleration, this second derivative. So let's, we can probably shorten that a little bit too. We can go back down to, let's try two milliseconds and see if we get rid of some of that lag. Oh, we got rid of some of the lag, but we picked up quite a bit of noise. Let's go back up to four on that. 
So you can see it's very much a matter of compromise on the parameters you select to clean up your data to allow you to be able to do reasonably reliable derivatives even uh, even if the value information is highly accurately measured. Now part of the problem is we don't always get perfect measurements of the values either. We have to allow for our analog to digital conversion. So what I'm doing down here in this function is I'm taking my values V and I'm looking at my analog to digital conversion in terms of offset and range and the number of bits of resolution that I've got. So I'm going to take my original set of values, copy them into this new set of values. I'm going to figure out what my resolution maximum number is. So 2 to the number of bits minus 1. For example, if the number of bits was 10 like on the Arduino, that number would be 1023. Then I can scale my original value by the offset and the range and then multiply it by the uh, by the number of values. So that'll give me a floating point version of what I would get out of my analog to digital conversion, my analog read function. I could add to that some random, normally distributed random error uh, for some conversion noise. And then I could finally take the floor of that value to round down to the nearest integer. So now it's an integer value that would come back from the, uh, from the analog read. And finally, I'll scale it back out again to the original value, the same way that I'd do if I was doing that conversion inside my Arduino code. And I can return the resulting values back here. And as a result, what I'll see is that I can get a new set of values by taking the old set of values and adjusting them over the range that's available. And it's easiest to see what comes out if we then plot versus time that new set of values and we'll see some of that noise. So here we see some data with some noise. That's these values down here. And you'll notice now it's got a little bit of noise on it, discrete values associated with the analog to digital conversion. We'd be pretty happy about that. As, uh, as individual values when we did our, uh, did our measurements before. But now let's see what happens if we use that to do some derivatives. So now I've got the same kind of thing going on. I'm going to smooth it. I'm going to then uh, take the derivative. I'm going to smooth it again take the derivative again. So I'm doing exactly the same as I was doing previously up here to get this data. But I'm going to do my calculations using my imperfect microseconds based uh, uh, time base. And I'm going to do it using my imperfect data that's been converted on the analog to digital conversion. And I'm going to see what happens. And let's Start off with values the same as we were using up here to get something that looks pretty good. So that was four milliseconds smoothing and three time steps to do the differentiation over. So 0 0.04, 0 0.04, and three, and three. And let's see what happens. Yikes! That data is not looking anywhere near as good as we might have hoped. I'm uh, I'm hoping that we can do a little better than that. Uh, even in fact, if we look at the orange stuff hiding back in there, even the first derivative has now got a bunch of noise on it. So let's smooth over a longer time. Let's try 10 milliseconds and see what happens. It's better, but we're getting some lag built in there. Let's try doing it over some more time steps. Well, it did get a little bit better, but not a lot. 
I think we probably need some more smoothing. Let's go to 20 milliseconds worth of smoothing. That's getting considerably better, but it's lagging behind in time. So what you're going to need to do whenever you're trying to deal with data like this where you're trying to take derivatives is you're going to have to find some way to improve the quality of that data to reduce the amount of noise. Because every time you take a numerical derivative, you amplify the noise that was on the original values by a huge factor. So this is causing us uh, a lot of difficulty here. The best thing to do is, if you can, try to avoid taking more than one derivative. For example, I can get a really good approximation here of what the velocity is, what the first derivative is, even if I can't get as good an approximation here of what the second derivative is. So keep all of that in mind when you're trying to calculate derivatives from your experimental data. Experimental data won't give you good values for derivatives because that whole derivation, that derivative process, is going to amplify the noise.